Om yum 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 yum. How rude of them, I know, right? Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Banshee Cup qualifier number one, day number one. On the left hand side, we have got bathrobe and bathrobe and enjoyers. Sorry, I thought it was bathrobe enjoyers. No, it's a very weird name. Bathrobe and enjoyers uh, versus Storm League enjoyers. What 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 great names we're going up against? Uh, this is the Meta Madness style of draft. There are no pre banned heroes. Heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps in this best of three. We're going to Alterac Pass for map number one. And we'll see what we got for our bands to kick things out. Kick things off. Uh, we're waiting for Kaldor. I think the Swedish team was a no-show, someone said. Yeah, yeah, that is that is right. So, Ross Pierdal then, right? Yeah, Ross Pierdal, because uh, Gia and them didn't show up today, apparently. Maka, Sw Gia, Swamgrata, Maka, Max Passion, and Skog. They're all probably sleeping, which is what I would love to do. <laughs> they better enjoy these matches. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Oh, right. Nubrak banned away. Don't want to deal with his shenanigans with uh, spawning beetles around the objective area. This is a really, really good map for, for a Nubrak, so nice heads up ban. Abther to be gotten rid of as well. Uh, there is a Hazu Ubs. We could see a Viking. We could see a Vikings option for Hazu Ubs here. Not sure what he's going to lean into, but we'll find out very, very soon. Oh, uh, bum 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 bum. Let's see what this last band is gonna be. Not sure what they want to prioritize against each other. Sylvanas, okay. No siege potential from her or mobility. So Alterac pass. A lot of team fighting around the objective area. Junkrat's a fantastic pickup as he's able to delay at the objective ad nauseum. <laughs> he's really, 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 really good at delaying things out with his uh, frag launcher grenades. Level 20, you can, or level 16, you can go into endless nades, and that's another way to just constantly poke around the objective area. Brightwing Blaze. All right. I hope they're not all sleeping. It's 4.38 p.m. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Maybe they had, they maybe they partied hardied last night. Maybe they partied too hard. I mean, this, the the Swedes do like to party, don't they? Uh, Hogger, Diablo, Junkrat. Okay, it's a fairly simple draft. Nothing, nothing too flashy. Could see a um, could see a Hanzo for either side, realistically. I'm actually kind of surprised that Hanzo made it through three games last series and wasn't even banned or picked. A little surprised by that. Maybe it was it. Maybe that. Maybe it's a gentleman's agreement. There's no one's gonna play Hanzo. Uh, Chromie will be banned away though. Don't want to deal with her burst ability. Also, she's got great poke around the objective area with the jump rat. But the Hanzo with Diablo could be a a, a combo that we see here. Genji Diablo is also an option as well. One third of the way done. I'm moving to Texas. Don't move to Texas. Because here's the thing, Foo Fighter. If you moved to Texas, you wouldn't have the power right now to be able to be to watch the stream. Think about that, bud. Maeva's gonna be uh, banned away. Sergeant Hammer with a Muradin Blaze Brightwing. Okay. Snowblowers are a beautiful thing. I I love I I I love my snowblower. I still I still shovel. So I have I have a deck in the backyard, and I still shovel that whenever we get a snowstorm because it's just good exercise. Honestly, I could I could leave most of it unshoveled and just have like a little path for Bandit. Um, and I like a little path to the hot tub and, and one to the grill, but I just I shovel most of it for the for the workout. Alright, hyper carry junk rat. 
And still have the Tyrael, though, so he's got good harassment and mobility. Judgment to get into the hammer as well. If I could get out of the driveway, I would go buy one. Homie. Homie. It's 2024. Go to www.homedepot.com and order yourself a snowblower. And I'm pretty sure the cost of the snowblower at Home Depot is going to cover the shipping cost. You can get it delivered to your house, like, probably in a day. Move to California or New Mexico. Yeah, California is great. We get we get tons of snowstorms. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the snowstorms in New Mexico, Nancy, but the snowstorms in California are very good. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Malthio runs out the draft. I'm so tired today. I'm, I'm delusional. It's going to be a weird casting day, chat. They won't deliver until Tuesday. Huh. What about Lowe's? <laughs> what about Amazon, dude? I wonder, I wonder. I mean, if you live in a populated enough area, Amazon delivers probably pretty quickly. Ah, excuse me. All right, I'll write us up a prediction in a moment. I was distracted by snowblower talk because I love talking about snowblowers, honestly. Left-hand side of the map, we've got bathrobe and enjoyers, Dino, Sergeant Hammer, Masquerade Murden, Death Knight Brightwing, Hazuob's Blaze, and Malthiel to be played by Ultralisk. On the right-hand side, Storm League Enjoyers. Uh, Rai is going to be your Hogger. We'll see an Aryan Diablo, Aether Junkrat, Lovkul, Rhaegar, and Tyrael to be played by Alvaris. All righty. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to park myself somewhere where we can see what's going to happen at the start, and I can write up a prediction. All right, which team wins? Alcrack pass. Sergeant Amber in top lane gets a wee bit of damage here. Sorry, my apologies. Trying to write this prediction up really quickly for you all. All right, that, uh, there we go. Twitch prediction's up and available. As uh, Ash Mantle gets it immediately. Nicely done, bud. Oh, Menards is a good option too, Nancy. You looked on Amazon? Your Toro Snowblower? Toro makes great products. It really just depends on how much snow you need to move. That's the real big thing. Like, where I live, a two-stage Snowblower is like the, is like the standard. Um, there are some people that do have a, a, a stage one, but more often than not, they need to get help from someone with a two-stage. It's it, it really just boils down to power and um, what you're going through. Like when I lived in Michigan, like stage a stage one snowblower, that's like that's fine. You can, you can get away with that. But out here, no no freaking way with the snowstorms we get. Death Knight tries to avoid the Concussion Mine, will be able to do so. The Fire Stomp and the Concussion Mine. Excuse me, the Frag Launcher Grenade over the wall. Junkrat gets first blood for the side of Storm League Enjoyers. Thank you all for the gambles. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you always, Ash Mantle, as well, for the reminder in chat. Menard sounds like something you yell when you get hurt, when you hurt yourself really bad. Oh, Menards! <laughs> Zero turn mower is also a Toro. I need to look at a new. I need to look at a, a new lawnmower for for the summer. Well, first off, I have to look and see if my lawnmower is fixable. If I can just buy a part and fix it myself. But. Yeah, it's it's been it's been quite some time since I mean I, I I got that lawnmower used back when I lived in Detroit And that thing that thing I think lasted way longer than it probably should have uh, Sledgehammer by the way level four for Muradin not only do you get the Stormbolt extra damage to non-heroic enemies So siege, you know, it's a good siege potential, but you also get the post level 10 cooldown reduction increased by 0.25 seconds Save big money at Menards! 
freaky. That's just now, now. Now I can't not hear it. Are you an Ooper now? A what? An Ooper? I don't know what an Ooper is. What's up, Dicey? How you doing today, bud? Mission accomplished. I currently just have a... Uh Siege in respective lanes, no real, no real priority around the objective. Oh, Uper! Oh no, Uper! Yeah, it spelled, yeah, yeah, it spelled the way Foo Fighters spelled it. The way Foo Fighters spelled it. Uper! Yeah, no one pronounces the Y. No one pronounces the Y, as I literally say Uper. Nobody, nobody, chat. Nobody. Uh, Oopers. Uh, I've never seen it spelled Ooper before. I've never seen that. Oh, there's a bit of a fight breaking out around the objective area as the uh, channel does continue in favor of uh, bathrobe enjoyers. It actually will be stalled out here. 4.7 seconds to go. Everyone from up here says Ooper. Well, in Metro Detroit, everyone says Uper and spells it Y-O-O-P-E-R. <laughs> I believe the term Uper was added into the, into the dictionary and it's spelled Y-O-O. <laughs> I believe it's actually it was added to the dictionary like a couple of years ago, wasn't it? And anyways, we all we all know that we all know that everyone in Michigan when they say they're going up north, they're going to like Traverse City. <laughs> they're still in the lower peninsula, but they're going up north. What does it mean, Uper? Oh, it's it's just a term for someone who lives in the upper peninsula of Michigan. That's all it is. It's just a term for someone who lives in the true up north. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where pasties reign supreme. And there's a lot of really good hiking. There's Pictured Rocks, which is an absolutely gorgeous area. All right, so first objective phase, we'll go over to the side of bathrobe and enjoyers. Is it bath? It's bathrobe. Not even, not even plural. It's just bathrobe and enjoyers. Ozu drops the bunker down. He'll get a jet propulsion to the face of the enemies that were trying to gank him, and he'll be able to back away safely. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Sergeant Hammer and crew can take down the fort easily. Actually, Sergeant Hammer is hover sieging past to try and get some siege onto the keep, because this bottom lane objective is still very healthy. Widow mines are going to be thrown out. Are they spider mines or widow mines? I forget. They are spider mines. Spider mines are thrown out. Gets a little bit of vision in case the enemy was trying to flank in. Hammer plays it slow and safe. Dino are able to wiggle their way out. You have to get over the bridge first? Yeah, that's true. Because some days the Mackinac Bridge is not open, because it's too windy. Now that bridge is that bridge can be terrifying so on, on a windy day when it's still open. That bridge is terrifying. There's also uh, two spellings of Mackinac. There's a there's there's a there's a different spelling for Mackinac City and Mackinac Island, but it's pronounced the exact same way, if I'm not mistaken.
Widow Mines. Uh, home team, thank you for the tier one for 14 months. We'll resend your alert when we get out of game. Thanks for being the first sub of the day. Jet Propulsion says hello to Diablo. And that's all that Hazuops is able to achieve. Murden tries to Dwarf Toss in for a flank. Diablo comes in with the Shadow Charge. Shockwave from Hogger hits Dino, but the hammer's absolutely fine. She'll throw a BFG out. Dino unable to get a kill with that. And the Riptire from Junkrat was also used. We're a bit odd in the Midwest. Oh, oh you know it. 360 Lightning Breath from Diablo. Must have been a bingo square for, for that player. Ancestor healing comes through just in time. Unfortunately, there still will be enough damage and a Lacerites to take down Diablo. Souls to be expended as Hogger gets a bounce to safety. Dude, Frito Pie? Oh, man. Frito Pie. Oh, that is, that is, that is, like, there's, there's some Michigan delicacies that I absolutely miss. Quality Coney Dogs, none of that Skyline Chili nastiness. Square Pizza, mmm. Detroit style Chinese food, ooh. You might be like, what, what the heck, Bahamut? Detroit style Chinese food? Yes, that's a thing, and it's delicious. It's American Chinese, but it's it's like, of course, Detroit has its own unique, unique style on things. Well, Masquerade looks to go for the channel, interrupted by the Jailers. Blaze helps clear things out. Masquerade gets the channel for the second objective phase. Hazuab's delaying things out in mid. Hogger. Not really sure what his bounce was intending there. Not sure if he wanted to jump into the enemy team or make his way back towards the lane, but either way. Objective is going to be stalled out at 20 seconds or so. Hammer, meanwhile, in top lane is trying to take down the fort. Junkrat to answer. Concussion Mine pushes Dino back. Meanwhile, around the objective on the bottom side of the map. Augur goes in for the bounce. He actually lands right next to Azuobs, gets the staggering blow into the wall. Ancestor healing cast onto Diablo. Last Rites is available if Malfield can jump in. He's gonna land uh, Last Rites. No? I'm very surprised he didn't throw that onto Diablo right there. He was in range for the kill, but either way, Dino has to back away to the safety of the fort front gate. Masquerade on the low side of our screen is going to try and back off as he did activate Avatar. And we got a couple... We just have one hearth on Hazu. Great, now I'm hungry. I'm always hungry. Made in blue metal pans. Blue metal pans. Are the buddies pans blue? A little bit of a little bit of harassment onto Diablo, but his health bar is just not moving whatsoever. Ultralisk is gonna get burninated. And it seems like Storm League Enjoyers have some late game momentum in their favor. Hogger with the shockwave follow-up CC into Hazuobs. No bunker available for him. And that is gonna be second objective phase of the game, going over to the side of Storm League Enjoyers. So what can they achieve? What can Storm League Enjoyers actually gain off of this? 99 souls for Diablo. He needs a minion or a fire stomp through an enemy. We'll get that off the way here in bottom lane. Masquerade's the target of a shadow charge. Able to dwarf launch out. He does have that level 16 range increase. Bottom siege is looking pretty good. Top lane, not too bad either. Tyrael in mid is just trying to poke in. Looks like we have a DC on the Tyrael, so let's go ahead and pull ourselves out of the game for competitive integrity. Blue Steel, isn't that the uh, Origin Detroit style pizza? Blue Steel? No, the, the, the history that I know is Buddy's Pizza is the original square pizza of Detroit, and when Buddy's was uh, starting out at their first location, it was near the automotive plants, 
and uh, one of the big three was pressing oil pans. So Buddy's Pizza went to the automotive uh, factory, and they bought the oil pans off of the off of them for like really really cheap, obviously unused. And that's how they got. That's why the Detroit style pizza is the shape that it's in, is because Buddy's was using. Um, yeah, they bought pressed oil pans from uh, from one of the big automotive companies. Oh, looks like the uh, snowstorm is starting out. So uh, I don't know if you can see the snow. You can kind of see it here and there if you look close enough. You, you see like a little bit dropping up again uh, behind the tree. Ooh, sorry, it is early. We are waking up slowly but surely. Way more awake for this series than I was the previous one. That's that's a certainty. I do want a cup of tea, but it was kind of making me nauseous. Don't know why. Oh, there we go. There we go. Where are we going? Uh, ready's being requested. The more you know, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course I would know the history of a pizza company. <laughs> of course I would know the history of a pizza company. Of all the people. Dude, I could go for, I could go for a square pizza. Oh man, that sounds so good right now. Like, some cold Jets pizza right now? Oh! Mm. Anyways. I'm sitting here thinking like, man, I should plan a trip back to Detroit. Not to see my family, not to see my friends, to just go get some food. <laughs> So we're two to three in kills. Second objective phase has been completed. Tyrael's working his way towards the top lane. Just checking the vision here between both the sides. Okay, so we know that they're going up towards the boss. But it looks like Muradin and, and the rest will grab this mid lane fort. They have to know the enemy's on boss. I, I don't see a world where they don't realize this. So either way, boss goes over to the side of uh, Storm League Enjoyers. Murden and friends, maybe they were considering... Sorry, I thought Bronzebeard Rage had, like, had damage over time still on that or something, but it's just a visual. It's just a visual of the structure on fire. So boss to top lane. Next objective phase shouldn't be too far off. Vegas is closer. Go to the pizza convention. I'm sorry. Hold up. There's a pizza convention? Hold the phone. There's a pizza convention. And how and when do I... Next sub goal. Send Bahamut to pizza convention. I'm sorry, GDQ. I will no longer being I will no longer apply to be a host for you. I am looking to work for the pizza convention in Vegas. Oh my god, I'd get so sick off pizza. It'd be amazing. <laughs> 20 talent tier is almost here to the right-hand side for Storm League Enjoyers. As I said, the next objective is up and available. Third one of the game. You just- I, I just found out about it today. Dude, I know- I know what we're doing while we're waiting for the next map. We're gonna be looking up pizza convention stuff and seeing how we can work the pizza convention. Dude, think about it! They gotta need a host. I'd sub to see a live stream from the convention. I'd consider doing it. I don't have a live stream set up though. And that's a lot of money. I'd have to hit up like um, Die Other Side or something like that and try and do something with him. Actually, so uh, he actually hit me up a while ago and um, he was asking if I wanted to go meet up with him and go snowboarding this winter. And then he was like, hey, would you be cool if I streamed it? And I was like, I honestly expected you to stream it. 
So, uh, Thy Other Side and I are gonna go snowboarding sometime in, like, February or something like that. I told- oh, I told him to look at it during February, because the, the season right now is not the best, but... So, the- the loose plan is February sometime, and, uh, he's gonna live stream it, and I'll show up and be there. Shockwave going through the- uh, oh, wait, hold on, Riptire! Ultralist does go down, Hazuobs is going to be dropping Bunker down, no control, Hogger bouncing through the enemies will take down the Brightwing, as Masquerade pops the Rewind, Tries to get the burst damage into mask uh, into uh, Hogger right there. Can't land enough damage as the Ancestor Healing does come through in time. And the objective phase will go to Storm League Enjoyers. March 19th through the 24th. I believe that's, act that's after my family visits. Uh, can Hogger solo these bosses or... Don't, don't you know? Oh, wait. Are you asking if Hogger can s solo bosses or are you making a joke? I'm sorry. What's <laughs> up, random? How you doing today? Dude, the, the dates, the dates for the international pizza convention don't look too bad. We have to, we have to look in, we have to look up, we have to look up some facts about this. All right, so bottom keep goes down. Top keep still on a bit of HP. Eh, we'll say 25%. But if you're asking if Hogger can solo bosses, no. I don't believe Hogger can solo bosses. I do not believe he can. Maybe if he has an Abather hat, but then that's not really solo. Oh, do 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 do! Cannonballs from Junkrat. We actually have the Lord of Terror from Diablo. The Soul, the Activate the Steel. Uh, Angel of Justice, by the way, for Tyrael. So you get range increase. I always like to, I always like to show the range increase on this. Look at this. Look at Tyrael's range. If Tyrael can see you, because this is Tyrael's vision. If Tyrael can see you on his screen, he can judge you. It's like the internet. Diablo goes in with a sh uh, shadow charge. Tira with the judgment as well. Hogger bounces in, looking for the shockwave onto a few backline enemies. Masquerade activates his avatar. BFG from Hammer goes out. Masquerade is able to back out of here just fine, just avoiding the spread launcher, frag launcher grenades. And it is fourth objective of the game, up and available here in 20 17 seconds. Diablo backs away to safety. Uh, Malfield did buy back in. Did he just, did it just come off cooldown? It did, wow. Malfield literally, it just came off cooldown, so. Malfield has his, uh, buyback. Or the no one can stop death. I don't know, buyback just sounds cool. It's a nice, nice MOBA term. Boss camp for top lane. Material throws out the Sword of Justice. You are the law. I don't know about that. <laughs> so Death Knight starts the channel on the objective, but it's not like they're trading boss or objective. Realistically, they can grab this and rotate down. Boss will confirm the keep. Hey, what's up, Ninja? Good morning, bud. Hope you're doing well today. Excited. I'm excited for you, hopefully, to hear back about uh, from IBM. All right, so as I said, boss gets the top lane, keep, and they are actually going to trade. Or maybe not. Drunkrat's trying to wiggle his way into this. Diablo Shadow charges on a Masquerade. Rhaegar looking for the counter channel. Doesn't look like he's... Yeah, he's going to have to try. Unfortunately, there's just enough splash damage, so the objective phase will go over to the side of, of Bathrobe and Enjoyers. Last Rites takes down the Tyrael. He'll try and get some death timer reduction. Meanwhile, back at the core, the boss did take down the keep. 
It is working on Vandar Stormpike, but with the objective spawning and some hearths, it looks like this will be fine. Hope you all enjoyed the uh, the movie night last night. I had a blast watching Scooby-Doo with all of you. It's such a fun movie. And uh, Friday the 26th is Monty Python Holy Grail. I keep wanting to say Monty Python Flying Circus, but that's the, the TV series. Midkeep is being worked on by Bathrobe and Enjoyers. Looks like they will take this down. Yeah. Hazu is trying to push a bottom lane. Diablo comes in with a shadow charge over power combo. Met by a jet propulsion of... Of Blaze. Masquerade jumps in looking for something here. Tyrael, whoa! Tyrael gets chunked so very quickly. Lord of Terror activated. Riptire from the Junkrat. BFG of Sergeant Hammer thrown out. Dino looking to take down some enemies, but now the Lightning Breath slowing down Hazu as he backs away. No control from Hogger activated. Malthiel activates his no one can stop death. Top lane is gonna be fine. Is it better than Velma? I, I did not watch the Velma TV show. I heard a lot of negativity about it. It didn't really seem that appealing to me, so I never watched it. But apparently the Velma show was like absolutely horrible. Judgment in from the Tyrael, trying to pressure the Brightwing, but now Last Rites on the Tyrael, and he will go down. That's the fourth stack of Last Rites from Althiel. As Hazuobs gets pushed around by Diablo, and the spread launcher, spread volley from, from Junkrat, chunks the enemies a bit, forces them to back away, but looks like they just want to go for boss. Yeah, fingers crossed for you, bud. Fingers crossed. I really hope that works out. Really hope that this works out. You, you get a solid position, and you don't got to work worry about finding a new client for a while, or maybe ever again. Pretty much everything is better than the Velma cartoon. Everything? You know what to do. Hmm. Today I learned. Even the last Airbender live action movie? So our objective phase is up and available. Masquerade is gonna pull the Jailers, and Dino gets the channel on this quite quickly. Boss in bottom lane. Does it get the keep? It's gonna be close. No, they, they get, it does get the keep. And Malthiel grabs a quick wave in top, but he's gonna back, actually he stops doing that. He's gonna join back into the ally so they can confirm this objective phase. Pretty much, ah, okay. Judgment from Tyrael, pressuring onto Hammer. There's already a shockwave in from Hogger as well. Bathrobe and Enjoyers are getting a little bit low. Malthiel has an 80 second death timer as he didn't have enough duration. There wasn't enough time elapsed from when his uh, last death happened. Ooh, great bounce in from Rai here. Hazu does go down. Meanwhile, mid lane. Uh, Hammer is gonna hearth out for, okay, yeah. Are they gonna try and end here? I honestly thought Velma was decent and pretty funny. Hey! It's almost like media's subjective. Malthiel used his uh, buyback right there. Bosses, are they going for this? It kind of seems... Masquerade and friends, what are you doing? What are you doing, Masquerade and friends? I mean, this is seen. They do see this. They know. They know something's happening over here. 
Okay, so mid camp is grabbed. Objective phase goes over to the side. I'm not really sure what bathrobe and enjoyers is doing here. Um, but they're definitely doing something. Is uh, they made a lot of weird choices. And never finished. It was going in a weirder direction, huh? You know what I? You know what show is really good? Delicious Dungeon. That show on Netflix is it's it's so good. Definite recommend from me. Delicious Dungeon if if you have Netflix. Ancestor healing onto Diablo. He did activate the Lord of Terror. Drekthar, excuse me, uh, the boss is pushing in. Lavkal is getting low. Is there enough damage to just end the game? Yes. Storm League Enjoyers will be victorious here on Alterac Pass map number one. You liked Velma too? Uh, maybe I should give it a shot. Maybe I should give it a shot. Which team wins Alterac Pass? It was Storm League Enjoyers. Right. I will follow you to the end of the world. Subscribe. No message. Thank you, home team, for the tier one for 14 months. I appreciate that greatly. So, we're just waiting for a map pick from the players during that time. Let's go ahead and run a block of ads. Uh, as, well, God of Twinkies. I, 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 I would ask them what they want to do, but there's no response. So, as I said, if there's nothing, if I don't hear back in a couple days, then I'm just going to re-raffle it probably. So, we're into map number two. Uh, we're going to Battlefield of Eternity. Storm League Enjoyers did win map number one. Apologies, excuse me. I'm a gassy boy, apparently. Uh, this is the Banshee Cup qualifier number one. We're in day number one as well. There are six qualifiers. That means I have to be up very early for uh, five more of these. <laughs> No, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's just the, the, the start of the day was a little bit rough, but now that the sun's out, now that, like, I've been going, um, yeah, it's not too bad. What a predicament. Eh, it's, it's a good predicament to be in. Hanzo, Dahaka, Lucio, what to be banned away for Battlefield of Eternity? Do we get a Vala ban, an early Greymane ban? It's Li Ming, no reset city. Uh, this tournament series does use the Meta Madness style of draft, so heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps. So the 10 heroes we saw in the previous map are unavailable for this Battlefield of Eternity, as Anduin will be the first pick for the side of Bathrobe and Enjoyers. Enjoyers versus Enjoyers, is this game rigged? No, but the gambles are. Gambles definitely are. Um, oh, also, by the way, we have our Final Fantasy VII Bid War, if you'd like to take a look at that. Vala Genji early on. Full Overwatch team, technically, for Storm League Enjoyers with the Reaper skin. Can you even go full Overwatch at this point? May, Zarya. Uh, Lucio's banned out. I'm missing someone, probably. Sorry. Anyways, uh, my heavy uh, I was. I'm, I'm literally like bingoing in my head right now. It's like, ah, oh, yes. How to make an all Overwatch draft with the current draft and what's available? Uh, do 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 do. And doing my heavy They're obviously going to choke all inside a bathrobe and enjoyers. Look at their draft. Look at me and tell me that they're not going to choke all. Totally. 
Uh, what do they want to get rid of here? Muradin was played in map one, so don't need to worry about him. He's good on this map for the race potential. A new Brack will be banned away. Okay. No burrow charge combos and stuff. An immediate snap ban onto Uther. Okay. No Uther main tank with a follow-up double support. Yeah, like, Uther Ariel actually could have been really good with the Vala as a battery. Um... I mean, it's a bit of memory. Anna May Zarya. That's thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ja Hut Yd. You're welcome. You're welcome for that perfect pronunciation of your name. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Jahana's gonna be grabbed here as well. I actually really like the Storm League Enjoyer draft. How are we gonna wrap things up for Bathrobe and Enjoyers? They're gonna need a main tank, unless it's main tank Maev and they pick up another support, but I don't think they're gonna go that direction. They also need a bit better race potential. Lunara's not a bad idea. Cassia's really good as well for the blind, uh, but they will go Sylvanas with Garrosh, okay. They will go Sylvanas Garrosh. Alrighty, okay. Uh, I like the draft. The siege is good. The team fight is is uh, well rounded. CC throughout the composition, like baseline on abilities and stuff. On the opposing side, the kill potential is high. I do like the Deckard Kane uh, for the slow, but also his healing reduction at four. I don't know if they're gonna go into that, but the Emerald at four is pretty nice. Arthas will round out the draft, which will uh, be really nice in reducing the Sylvanas auto attack speed and stuff like that. I, I actually really like the draft for Storm League and Jars. I wonder if they could. Um, I wonder if they could take this in a 2-0. That pronunciation is a war crime. Sorry, bad joke. No, you're okay. It's okay. No, I see how it is, God of Twinkies. It's okay. No, it's fine. No, it's cool. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine, God of Twinkies. It's fine. All right, let's go ahead and start a prediction. <laughs> Battlefield, a uh, field of eternity. All righty, on the right-hand side of the map, we are gonna have the members of Storm League Enjoyers up in this best of three series here on Battlefield. Alvarez playing your Arphis. We've got a Genji to be played by Aryan, Aether on the Vala, Lavka will be your Deckard Kane, and Rai will be the Johanna. The battle begins in 10 seconds. On the left, West Ham side, we've got the West Ham side. We got Bathrobe and Enjoyers. We've got Hazuab's Yurel. Maev to be played by, I don't know, Ultralist, Death Knight on the Anduin, Masquerade to play the Garrosh, and Dino will be your Sylvanas. Looks like we got a DC here, so we'll wait for a moment. We'll go ahead and uh, pull ourselves out of the game, just so we don't show where teams are rotating and stuff like that. And we'll start the, uh, we'll start the, we'll start the prediction once we get, once we actually get into the game. Good morning, Patty. How you doing today, bud? Is it really fine though? It's fine. <laughs> All right, we're back into the game. Sapphire level one for Deckard. We've got the Warbreaker. Hold up, Genji displaced right now. Gets an immediate deflect, swift strike through, and the top lane tower does lose one. Well, let's go ahead and or the top lane fort front gate will lose one tower. Let's go ahead and start that prediction for all of you at home. Which team is going to be winning Battlefield of Eternity? Map number two in our second best of three of the day. I believe we have four best of threes in total today. So, if you'd like to win yourself some channel points, if you'd like to donate some channel points to the Bandit Buck economy, if you want to go all in, now's the time to do it. We got Rhyme for our Arphis at level one. Hold up, that's gonna be a great displacement into Jahana, but she is not gonna be picked off. Genji DCs once again, unfortunately. Genji DCing once again. So I apologize, we'll have to jump out of the game once again. 
but uh, not not a bad start for the side of Storm League Enjoyers. They they took a bit of harassment here. Excuse me for um. Bathrobe and Enjoyers, sorry, the other Enjoyers. Uh, Bathrobe and Enjoyers had a nice start. They took a little bit of damage here and there, but the siege at the top lane was really well done. Uh, we currently have a DC on one of the players, so we we like to jump out of the game just for competitive integrity. I doubt these players will like hot like they'll open up a, a tab and and watch the stream to see where the enemies are positioned, but I doubt that. But just just for safety, just for safety. So we wait for our player to reconnect. Not sure what the issue is, but apparently Polish internet something. I, I open up Twitter and I see a Guile co uh, cosplay. Ooh, a lot of birds outside. I see a Guile cosplay. It's just adorable. <laughs> I don't know why, but the hair the hair on this is just killing me. The hair on this is just absolutely killing me. It's it's so perfect. The hair is just too good, man. <laughs> oh god. All right, let's see. Any uh XD XD ah uh, XD hello ah uh, XD. Okay, cool. So we're just XDing apparently. So apparently, um, I was seeing yesterday, apparently the reason Twitch is laying off so many people is because Twitch is still not profitable or something like that. <laughs> God, that guy cosplay is too good. Anyways, we're back into the game. Apparently Twitch is not profitable. And that's why they have to lay people off. Maybe, maybe that's the reason why they were trying to, uh, you know, the the artistic, the artistic nudity. Maybe, they, maybe they were trying to, you know, make that extra coinage that that Twitch is totally, you know, suffering. Man, almost, almost like if Jeff Bezos took some of his money and just like I don't know, invested it into the into into Twitch or something. I don't know. That, that'd be crazy, chat. I don't know, I feel like the easy the easy and the correct blame is just blame Jeff Bezos. I feel like that's just that's just the answer. I don't think Twitch is not profitable. It's just Jeff Bezos' fault. So, uh, level four is about to be here. We're gonna see bottom lane camp go over to the side of bathrobe and enjoyers. Couple little DCs early on, but it seems like that is leveled out for the time being. Arthas and Maev in the top lane. We do have the Subdue level 4 for our... Oh, I was talking about Ruby at level 4, by the way. Or Emerald at level 4. I meant to say Emerald at level 7. But either way, we do have Ruby at level 4. Sapphire and Ruby. Okay. Are we going to see the Emerald at level 7? Are we going to go Perfect Gems level 20? We'll see what kind of game this is. Indomitable Garrosh. Piercing Light Anduin. Shuriken Mastery for the Genji. Arthas did go into the Death Lord. Increase the range of Death Coil by 30%. Reduce its cooldown by 3 seconds. And if Death Coil is used on an enemy hero, its mana cost is refunded. Objective phase. First one of the game is up and available. Let's see how things look between these two teams when it comes to race. Genji's Shin Gun later on should help out with that. Johanna looking to step in and chase down Death Knight. Can't make the connection with the Condemn. There's going to be a nice leap of faith on the Masquerade. Saves him right there. Bit of floor juice on the ground. We'll see if Genji wants to dive in for that. Doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Aether on the Vol on the right-hand side does split off and starts working through the Immortal. Just keeping those auto attacks railing in. Raining in. Railing in. Hazu, though, is going to try and delay a little bit. Vala picks up a free uh, stack off of Hazu, I think, on the level 1. Meanwhile, Arthas is trying to zone Garrosh and stuff. Okay, we do have the Genji now trying to chase down Hazu Obs here. Not a whole lot of mana left on Genji, and it doesn't seem like he'll chase any further. The race is off between both sides. And they don't get it. 
Oh, no, they do get it. They do get it. Sorry, I have immortal dyslexia. Uh, masquerade now with the pause. Not sure about that. Uh, that's that's kind of toxic. Not 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 gonna lie. That's kind of toxic. That's kind of toxic, dude. Is this Steven Universe? No, this is bad. It's kind of toxic, man. Mr. Bandit, do you got tasty paws? You got tasty paws, mister. Bet you do. Uh, alright, we got a pause with no... Okay, Masquerade has keyboard problems. Interesting. Uh, readies are being requested. There they are. So the Immortal will go into bottom lane. Big Bad Belleth in the bottom lane, favoring the side of Storm League Enjoyers. We're actually going to see Bathrobe and Enjoyers will be getting some free siege with the Black Arrows activated from Dino. And actually, the entire fort front gate does go down, Haunting Wave out. As Garrosh also gets a free stack on his Groundbreaker as Joanna's stepping in. A little zoning scroll of ceiling from Decker Kane. Umbro bind onto two, chastise, piercing light. There's a toss onto Genji. He pops the deflect, but he still does go down. And that's first blood of the game. Going over to the side of Bathrobe and Enjoyers. Look at all that floor juice. Genji could have used some of that floor juice. Genji could have used some of that floor juice earlier on. Still have the Arel art this top lane. Ultralisk is going to activate nice memento. It's got that bounce level one. And that'll finish out the camp a little bit faster. Uh, it is going to be, it's going to be Kanai's cube at level 7 for Decker Kane, which would be the damage reduction dealt by Hero's hit by 30% for 4 seconds. Maya making a rotation to top lane. Oh, Sylvanas as well. Their, their models are kind of overlapped right there. Arthas steps in, but now it's like, oh gosh, I regret stepping in here, and I think he should go down. Nice, righteous hammer. Lands the Howling Blast, not stacking level 1, so that's unfortunate right there. Haunting Wave used as the Black Arrow is activated as well. Johanna's trying to anchor, at least harass in the back line, not anchor. Vala poking here and there. Nine stacks on her level 1. This Masquerade is going to be slowed a little bit. Genji is floor juice now. That is true, Tan. Genji, Genji did become floor juice. That is that is correct. Let's see. Level 4 for Genji. 21, 22 stacks on Shuriken Master. He picks up a few extra off of Masquerade here. 10 stacks for him on his Groundbreaker on Garrosh. Or Warbreaker level 1. Umbro Bind finds the Deckard Cane. Ultralis looking to put some pressure onto the old man, but no retirement home is in his sights. Yurel, Hazuobs is already working on the objective phase. Genji jumps in. Level 10s are almost here. Let's cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage, healing, and experience looks like between both these teams. It is time for strategy. God, the amount of the amount of awakeness that I feel now versus like an hour or so ago is it's just wild. An hour ago, I was like, God, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna make it through all the game state? Now I'm just like, all right, cool, here's the storm, let's go! <laughs> oh, tens are here. We have a Syndragosa from Arthas, Umbro Bind, Light Bomb from the Anduin, a very low Deckard Kane tries to get away and he will not be able to do so. Anduin's desperate prayer will be a desperate plea for help as he does fall. This is healer for healer. This is just looking like quick match now. Genji Swift strikes in. Alright, this throws out the Death Coil. Dig going to the level 7 Immortal Coil. Havala, Genji, they'll work on this objective. Decker just now respawning. Anduin about to be back up. Arthas and Jahana anchoring for the team. Little shield glare to try and dismount Masquerade. Won't connect. But this objective phase is looking really good. Really, really good for Storm League Enjoyers. Karel jumps in. Oh, is there a potion for Jahana? I think, actually, the Iron Skin was enough, though. Arthas now trying to get away. There is a potion to the north side, but he's not going to be able to make it there. Oh, wait, the floor juice to stay a while and listen. 
Can they make a play happen? Is there a counter kill? Unfortunately not. But Storm League Enjoyers do get the Immortal, and that does go to top lane. Second Immortal of the game, second one to the side of Storm League Enjoyers. You don't get the Arthas, can someone explain it to you? Well, Arthas has auto attack speed reduction on his, um... Oh, Frozen Wastes, Frozen Tempest. So, so one, you have, it has movement speed, but it also has auto, it has attack speed slow. So if you're in a 1v1 versus the Urel, you can, you can kind of slow her down. You can harass onto her. He's got okay self-sustain. He went into these death coils, so he has extra sustain off of those. Syndragosa is a really good siege, uh, siege tool. So it's a, I would say this is a little bit of a player flavor. Alvarez probably has like a, a well-practiced Arthas. So he's like, you know what? Into Hazu Urel, this is something I can, I can bully him with. As I said, Syndragos is a good way for amplifying Siege. And you also get a baseline root with the Howling Blast. So he's got a, he's got a few values in his kit that are nice. As top lane Sylvanas does go down. So I would say this is a bit of, it's a bit of flavor. It's something Alvaris thinks they're gonna get value out of. And it also has some really, really good utility that allows Genji, Vala to sustain chases. Like we're, we're talking aggra like we're talking defensively or in the 1v1, but also if you think about it, that slow, that root, all these things that are baseline on, on the Arthas, these are all great things for Vala and Genji. You slow down the enemy hero, also Decker Kane's got slows, he's got roots as well. You lock these enemies or slow them down, the sustained damage of Vala and Genji will be able to take down the hero. So it's it's not super duper popular, but we are in the Meta Madness style of draft, so we are lowering the amount of uh, solo laners and stuff. So that's 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 my logic that I can throw at it. I could be completely wrong, and that's very, very possible, but that's the way I look at it. So I hope that explains it. Anti-dive choice? It's a, yeah, it's a bit of that. But also, Arthas, they can also keep applying pressure. They can be aggressive with this. Be, be aggressive. Less shield from the Johanna. X-Strike used as a disengage too. We have Maev with the Light Bomb. She's gonna get an Umbral Bind. There's a stay on listen from Decker Kane. Genji wants to try and get these potions. Decker Kane does activate his level 13 Ancient Blessings. That's what that little golden glow underneath the model is, as you see just now expiring from Arthas. And a bit of a flubbed fight right there. Bit of a flubbed fight. Uh, Yigor420. Thank you for the tier one for two months. Glad you're enjoying your time here. Thank you for the continued support, and we'll resend your alert when we get out of game. As a reminder, we have the Final Fantasy VII naming bid war. I'm gonna explain that here in a moment as Johanna will be picked off. So if you would like to apply your sub amount, the $5, you can name a character for Final Fantasy VII. We'll be starting that next week, or I guess this week, next week. Anyways, uh, we'll be starting at Wednesday. You can take your five bucks and be like, oh, I want to continue naming Bandit Red 13, or you can add in a new name. There we go. Uh, there's a command in chat if you'd like to use it. Light bomb a little early, I think. Decker Kane either way is still gonna go down. Nice. Combination kills from the members of Bathrobe and Enjoyers. And it looks like they will be able to get themselves their first objective of the game. Third objective overall. Oh, wait, hold on. A lot of damage into Urel and Masquerade. Hazuobs, there's the Cindergosa to slow down the enemy. This will be objective phase going over to the side of uh, Bathrobe and Enjoyers, but man, that, that damage onto uh, Alarian right there was pretty quick and chunked out a lot of the shields that will be available. Thank you, Stark. Meta Madness does this kind of thing to us a lot. Yeah. Oh, also to note, this tournament series, the Banshee Cup, does not have any pre-banned heroes. And I don't... Rob was in chat earlier, Rob Paris, uh, one of the tournament admins, and I think he was saying there's no plans to add any in the future. So that's nice, that's nice. That also means we could have a best of seven grand finals. 
Because the reason we didn't have a best of seven grand finals for the other for Meta Madness 8 is because there was literally not enough characters at that point in the tournament to have a best of seven. I think it was like by the time they got to map six, they were out of characters. Like literally they would have to like not ban something. Wailing arrow from Sylvanas. The black arrow's activated as well. Alarian gets decent damage. They're trying to save the keep in the top lane, and it looks like it will not be saved in time. Just as the keep falls, so will the immortal. Thanks for the feedback. Absolutely. I do my best. Ultralisk is going to get chunked here. Genji, Swift Strike, X Strike. That's great, though. Getting a little bit low here. Genji jumps in. Enemies are going to be thrown away. Camp will be cleared up before it even gets in the lane. And we are waiting for our next Immortal Phase to spawn here. It's going to be in the east-west positioning on the defensive sides. Uh, we know this because the axes naturally show, if you're looking on the minimap over here, uh, the axes naturally show for, or the vision naturally shows for the blue team. So if I were to swap vision, if you look at the minimap, then the locations will swap X, uh, axes and shield. A little tidbit in the casting side of things. Camp will be left to leash. There's a big light bomb to follow up or answer Decker Kane's scroll of ceiling. A very low Johan is trying to back away. She has no potions. Cindergosa from Arthas. As Urel is trying to back away, Arden Defender was used 10 seconds ago. And it looks like Maev does not land an Umbra Bind on Davala. Arthas throws back a Howling Blast to try and disengage. Reign of Vengeance as well from Vala. And no trade to be had. Storm League Enjoyers were trying to make some sort of trade happen into the into Urel, but just not enough damage to confirm the kill. She will stay. She'll be alive for now. Genji checks the bush with a shuriken and... Almost gets hit with a containment disc. Seems like first obje first half of the objective phase going quickly. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Genji, what were you doing there, bud? Floating a little too close to the enemy. As yeah, that's rough. That's a rough go right there. Vala steps in, looking to throw a bit of damage on the Masquerade. He tanks that just fine. And this is a very well-shielded Immortal going into bottom lane for the side of Bathrub Enjoyers, who are looking to take us to a map number three, and it looks very plausible. Deckard Kane looks like he'll set up in bottom lane here, and he's going to throw a few potions out into the lane already. There's a camp in top lane. Hazuobs will clear that out immediately. Catapult as well. Masquerade anchoring for the allies, but this is going to be a Larry into the bottom lane really healthy. A lot of damage, a lot of health. Uh, 24,000 points of health, and about the same in shielding, if I'm not mistaken. 1,724 damage in the structures. Yeah, literally 48,400 points of health and shielding in total right there. Reign of Vengeance on Daguerre. She pops the Indomitable, steps into the Vala. We get a huge Light Bomb on Vala. She does go down. Sylvanas getting that kill. Stay well and listen, activated by Decker Kane, but the old man is going to be sent to the retirement home. Go eat yourself some hard candies right there, bud, because that is a 44 second death timer. And I think with Genji falling on the bottom side of bottom lane, we are going to be having a map number three. It's going to be a 1 1 score here after Battlefield of Eternity. The nice thing about this is it's less less editing for me. <laughs> Three games, I don't have to add in any I don't have to add in that much spoiler free time. Which by the way, these games will start going up on YouTube tomorrow. Hey, John is done with subdue, and she's also dead. Alright. Storm League Enjoyers fall, and it's Bathrobe in Bathrobe and Enjoyers will be taking map number two. We're heading to a map three chat. Thank you once again, Igor, for the tier one for two months. I will follow you.
to the end of the world. Subscribe. Let's go enjoy us. Get a Finland. Oh, someone got a Finland to this game. Thank you again, Igor. I appreciate that. You uh, enjoy your points. Mm, delicious. What's up, Stealth? How you doing, bud? Oh, nice, 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 nice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, a little bit of lag right there. Sorry about that. A little choppiness. We're in map number three, second best of three of the day. 20 heroes are unavailable because of the Meta Madness style of draft, but still, there's 90 heroes in, in all of Heroes of the Storm. Burp. So still 70 heroes up and available uh, to be chosen from. Of course, you do have your uh, bands at the top of the screen, but either way... Map number three in our second best of three. There's still two more best of threes coming up as I have a nice, beautiful snow day here in the mountains. So uh, thank you all once again. I appreciate all the, the hangs and everything. Thank you again, BRB Soaking, for the $20 tip. And thank you, Zig, for the tier one for 27 months. Uh, I will say this. I have the best tier three alert on all of Twitch. And tier three splits are better for, for, for Bandit. It is a 70-30 split on Tier 3 subs for Bandit. Tier 2s are 60-40 and Tier 1s are 50-50. Because I'm not a partner plus. Anyways, uh, Lucio Chromey banned away. I think Lucio's had 100% ban, ban? Lucio has been banned 100% of the games that we've cast today, I think. Words am hard today. Oh, also, I'm going to make a new 30 sub alert. Uh, I figured out what we're going to do last night while we were watching movies. So I'll make it tonight, probably, because I'll be I'll be editing stuff in DaVinci after stream today. What? Why is my phone going off? Oh. Please, good sir, I doth bequeath you to rename Sir Vincent to Sephiroth. Okay, alrighty. Why is my screen capture on here? Oh, right, because I was doing uh, Resurgence of the Storm, that's why. Alright, uh, Lard, thank you very much for the $8.40. I appreciate that greatly. Alright, so we want to name, we want to name Vincent Sephiroth. So, uh, yeah. I never know how to spell Sephiroth properly. Sephiroth, I think I got that right. And that's 10.5, 10.5. All right, there we go. What was the TTS? Good sir, I doth bequeath you to rename Sir Vincent to Sephiroth. There we go. Thank you very much, Lard, for the $8.40. I got your ten fifty applied to Vincent as Sephiroth. So we're getting into Fr Infernal Shrines map number three. Mephisto Stitches. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Will this be an Alex Straza ban? If it's not, I, 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 I don't know why you, you're taking that risk. Thanks, you're welcome, bud. I also love hearing, I, lo I, I love, like, just about every alert I have on the stream. So I don't mind listening to it ever again. Um, ba bum 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 So, do they go Alexstrasza? Right? Like, this is, this is the map, this is the comp, right? Thank you. Hmm. Her Royal Thickness. And Cassia. And Cassia. God, I love the Alex Straza portrait. Last two picks. Okay, so was Tyrael played? Yes, he was. Tyrael's played in map number one. So no Tyrael Tracer. Abathur is up and available. This isn't a bad map for Abathur. Abathur Tracer's a really good combo. No, they're going to go Kale, Thoughts, and Malganus. 
Excuse me. Sorry, I'm back thinking about pizza again. I got I got distracted and I didn't look up the International Pizza Convention in Vegas. But now I'm back to thinking about pizza. I don't know why. I don't know why. Kalefoss reminded me of pizza. All right, so they need a solo lane. I love this draft. I love the Storm League Enjoyer draft. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I think they could take a W here. Or am I caster cursing them? We're gonna find out. Um, Yeah, I really, I really like the Storm League Enjoyer's draft. I really like it. I think that I think that 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 could take it. All right, let's write up a prediction. Alex her royal thickness and stitches his royal thickness. <clears throat> just a bunch of just a bunch of thick kids. Uh, inter -na inter national pizza expo. Sorry, just gonna leave that on a tab for later. Don't mind me. Okie dokie chat. On the left hand side of the map, we are going to be taking a look at bathrobe and enjoyers. Masquerade playing Malganis. Hazuabs on Dahaka. We've got a Death Knight Malfurion. Ultralis Kalefoss. Oh, he took the wrong level one. Dino will be your tracer. To the east of the map. A really cool composition. I'm excited to see how it unfolds. Storm League Enjoyers. Alvaris playing Sonya. Aether Cassia. Rye on the Stitches. Ariane will be your Mephisto. And Lavkal on the Alexstrasza. She did go for Circle of Life level 1. Blind hook into the bush. No enemy found. Cassia is going to be Charge Strikes 1. Slam Jam for the Sonya. Malganus is Winged Guard level 1. Tracer with the tracer rounds. Tissue regeneration for Mal, uh, excuse me, for Dahaka. And as I mentioned, Kael'thas did take the wrong level one. He went mana attic by accident. All right, well, no little, no fight, no scuffle, but let's go ahead and start the prediction chat. Get your gambles in. Which team is gonna win map number three? This is a double elimination bracket. If you'd like to check out more information on the tournament, use exclamation bracket. And as a reminder, I forgot to do this in the last series. If you're enjoying yourself here on Twitch, be sure to drop a follow. It costs you $0, and it does help us grow to the channel. And if you're watching over on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube channel a little bit further so I can make more clickbait content and upset all of the YouTubies. You're only resubbing for the ass. Uh, well, that's what everyone subs for. Oh, wait, no, they sub for Bandit. Uh, I thank you for the tier one for 13 months. I appreciate that greatly. So, safe rotation towards the bottom lane. Cassie's going to check the bush with a uh, lightning, no, a, th a lightning fury. I'm trying to remember the name of the talent. I'm assuming it's a level four spite from Mephisto. I am a little surprised Stitches didn't go for hungry for more at level one. He did go patchwork creation. I would have thought he would have been trying to grab globes with the Alexstrasza. Uh, level one, but no, nope. just gonna be having gain three armor every time every uh, excuse me gain three armor for every unit afflicted with vile gas stacking up to eight times Y'all can do that math. That's that's some caster math. I can't do that uh, While shambling horror is active this armor amount is double So you can get double that amount while the shambling horror is active and then passive increase regeneration effects and all healing received by 15% there's that spike from Mephisto. Alex Straza will continue building out her abundance here with level 4. Surge of Vitality. Hook on to Dino, gets the recall. First Shrine, Mortar Punisher for the mid lane. And looks like Sonya's gonna be working on the camp on the right hand side. Yeah, math, math, math him hard. Oh, Bathrobe and Enjoyers are looking to invade this camp, and I do think they will find a Cassia with a drag. Nicely done. Hazuobs, Dahaka, and friends will be able to steal away the camp and find first blood of the map. B 
bit of a bummer right there. Hazuab's already on three stacks of the level one. Tissue regeneration does have the hero stalker level four. Night rush. Unfortunately, I don't know if uh, he tried to drag right there. The animation of the autos and the drag kind of look a little similar at times. But it looks like Bathrobe and Enjoyers will be finishing out this objective phase. Mortar Punisher towards the mid lane for our blue squad. And Sonya just clears out top slowly but safely. Hazu taps the bush looking to maybe... Nah, he's just checking. No, there's no way they dive onto Sonya in this top. Oh, Hazu's just trying to pick up some of the experience that's up there. I see. Okay. He literally wasn't trying to harass. He was just trying to grab the experience that Sony was delaying out in the lane. All right. Punisher jumps over. Gravity Labs, Pulse Bomb, Drag. Alex Strauss has to activate the Dragon Queen. We'll have our DC onto Mephisto. Looks like there won't be a pause. A little surprising. A little surprising. Not going to lie. All right, now that we're in a pause. Now that we're in a pause. Oh, the readies are coming out immediately. Never mind. So Mephisto's back into the map. We have got Midfort falling. Sonya Dahaka top lane still brawling out between the two of them. Sonya did go Poison Spear level seven. And she's gonna try and wiggle her way to safety. Unfortunately, cool guys don't look at explosions. Dino drops the pulse bomb, blinks away, and that's the end of Sonya's health bar. Okay, and stitches will hearth out in top. I think he's just trying to make the faster rotation. Or excuse me, a hearth out of bottom, probably rotate to top, so he's just gonna make the faster rotation via that. Okay, interesting. Oh, I see, he's just getting mid lane. Got it, got it. Mephisto, Alex Straza just chilling in top lane by the fort front gate, and Dino is like, all right, cool. We'll just dive you underneath your tower. That is giga upsetting. That is, literally Alex Straza was just chilling right here for a, a, a solid 30 seconds, and Dino and, wow, all right. Well, with three kills and a level lead, 10 talent tiers here to the side of Bathrobe and Enjoyers. We'll cycle through the other numbers as the tens are at the top of the screen. No dark conversion for Masquerade. He's going to go carry and swarm. I heard the hook go out, but I don't think it connected. Dahaka looked for a little drag right there out of the bush. Alex Mephisto in a competitive game, weird? Why weird? This is like the best map for that combo. Level four spike cooldown, stitches. I mean, he didn't go globes at one, but I was thinking he would. I I feel like this is the this is like the map where you see Alex draws a Mephisto the most. This is the map where I see a lot of Mephisto as well. I mean, it's also meta madness style of draft too. Durance of hate, just shy of the enemy. But you voluntarily pick Alex in the video game. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I don't. I don't get the joke. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't get it. Like this, this is like Alex Strauss's like best map as well because of Dragon Queen and control around the objective. I'm confused. I don't get it. Fisto, excuse me, Malganus is going to be gorged right there. My apologies, there's a dive onto Cassia in the bottom lane. Looks like she will fall. And the bottom fort does get picked off as well. Life Binder, Durance, Ball Lightning, Leap, and Gorge. Okay, hold up. There's going to be a Pulse Bomb onto Sonya. She does go down. 
Leap was on a 20-some second cooldown. Dino's able to get the auto attacks over the wall. The tracer rounds providing that extra little bit of vision. And Stitches tries for a hook. No connection onto the enemy. No gorge is available there either. Masquerade grabs the objective. Bathrobe and Enjoyers will have another objective in their favor. Map number three is looking dominant from our blue squad. Good invades, good ganks. It looks like Dahaka's made his way up here, so Masquerade does not need to be the one to focus on that while Kael'thas clears out the wave. And we'll see Primal Rage as well for the Dahaka. He's already finished his tissue regeneration, went into Feeding Frenzy level 7, but you get the 1.25% increased attack damage per essence stored. So we see Tahaka go into bottom lane. Gonna try and jump onto Alvaris here. Malganus is okay. Malgan There's a leap over the wall. Finds Malganus. Yeah, you dead. You dead. Uh, does this show the Haka scaling on his attack? I don't know if it does or not. <laughs> Meanwhile, top lane, Alex Straza tries for a life binder. And tries to pop Dragon Queen. She'll go down. Kael'thas gets the double kill. Mm, this is going to be a dead Mephisto as well. Sonya just now respawning. What are you talking about? Alex has globe talents. What? Oh, you're not talking to me, I don't think. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, someone com oh, Stitch has completed the quest while he was dead. I've, I never saw that visual bug before. That was cool. So Stitches hits 13, he gets his extended hook, but the top lane fork gets shredded like a block of cheese. Jump onto Mephisto, who tries to, oh my god. Pulse Bomb, Life Binder is forced out from Alexstrasza. Mephisto does live for the time being. Alexstrasza pops Dragon Queen, and the keep front gate is going to be going down. Punisher will be cleared out. <coughs> Darren Savate goes fishing for an enemy, doesn't find anything. So does the hook. 16 talent tier advantage, a three level difference between these two teams. Malganus with the night rush in, the, Mal the objective will expire, but that is a lot of damage over time, or excuse me, a lot of living bomb damage from Kael'thas. Mephisto tries to jump away with the shade, but he should get picked off as well. It's a quick triple kill to the side of, wow, that, that gravity lapse like jumped one extra pixel or whatever. Daka hits the keep with a drag, because it does deal spell damage. Oh, the gravity lapse does not connect. Alex Straza playing with fire here. Get it? Alex Straza playing with fire here. You get it, chat? You get it? You get it? Anyways, core is going to start falling. We do have Sonya and Stitches back from death. The death timers are a little bit low. But the other thing that's low right now is going to be Sonya's health bar. She is going to die once again. Hazu's, uh, Hazu's trying to end. No, he's actually, they're going for the fight once again. Malfurion. Death Knight throws down a root. Alex Straza goes down. Malfurion traded. Phoenix is thrown out from Kael'thas, and they go back to dealing with this core. Tracer gets the recall. Dino trying to get away from the Cassia. If they don't, if they didn't end here, it'd be it'd be kind of funny. But anyways, they do end here. The reverse sweep happens, and Bath Robe and Enjoyers take this best of three. So Alex thinks she's Blaze. No, she's playing with fire because she throws fireballs out. Come on. Thought it was obvious. Can Streamlabs give me a different alert? I will follow you to the end of the world. Subscribe. I'm only resobbing for the butt hammer, but. Yeah, I'm not, I don't blame you. Thank you, I, for the tier one for 13 months. I appreciate that greatly. Dude, look at that healing difference. God dang. All right, uh, pay out the people. Bathrobe and Enjoyers did win.